Howdy guys, it's Luke at Luke's APS and in this video we're going to get sticky fingers. We're going to flock stuff. And we're also going to put Bill Cosby down. Stay tuned to find out. So guys, yes. This video is all based on Kings of War. It's a multi-basing and I'm going to be doing like a Tundra type setting. I'm going to an event on Saturday which is the Clash of Kingston. I'll put all the links to that below and the next upcoming events. Um, I'm redoing all my Dwarf Army. Anybody knows about Kings of War and stuff knew that I did a, a, a full Slayer themed army. Now, I've always wanted all the old Citadel Slayers and a few other models that I've always wanted to put in this army. I've now got everyone that I want, so I thought I might as well do the bases for them. So this is a video of me doing that style base. I'm also going to put a few easy water effects and things on there. And yeah, so anybody that's into massive multi-basing and Kings of War, this video's for you. See you in a bit. Right guys, so first of all, you're going to need your bases that you're uh, going to be basing your army on. And then some different polystyrenes from extruded to polystyrene to blue under floor insulation foam, just different sizes. And from that, I'm using my favourite rock mould, which is the Outcroppings mould, which is one of the smaller ones from Woodland Scenics, which will be in my Amazon affiliates. Uh, and this is the Luke's APS casting plaster, which you can find in my store below. Mix this to a decent consistency for pouring. And the reason that we're doing this now is so that it can be drying while we're working on the rest of the bases. If you copy this process, it means that you will work a lot more efficiently and a lot quicker. So we're using a bit of blue foam just so it sets level and then just pour it in. Okay, don't worry about any over pouring or you don't have to be too careful at this point. If anybody's worried about air bubbles, I mean, you could paint some uh, fairy liquid or something into the bottom of the mold, but I never bother. Um, I just think it adds to a bit of texture at the end of the day. Put them to one side and let them cure while we're working on the rest of the bases. Now this is going to be the hard base, um, so I'm just using a piece of polystyrene. My new way of cutting foam, which is just so much quicker and just it's tidy and neat. Um, it's just use a razor saw to drag it across um, and that way there's minimal mess. These are a little bit more than using a foam cutter, but it's a lot cheaper and most people have razor saws already. Um, to get this sort of random ground forming look that I want, I'm just snapping it. Not messing around, just give it a snap. At the end of the day, don't have to go to detail with this bit because we'll use modeling compound over this later. Now to glue all this in place, we're going to use a polyurethane glue by uh, Gator Glue. Another reason why we use this is one, it dries very quickly, about 20 minutes before you can work on it. And yeah, it's just a very good strong glue that you can even cut through with a, pol with a hot wire cutter if you choose to. This can be purchased from Geek Gaming below. And no, I can't get it to stand up on the bottom. Apply the glue. Um, if you want, if you are in a rush and you're wanting it to react a lot quicker, just give it a spray with water because polyurethane does react with water. You don't have to do this step, but it does speed it up if you wish to. Once you've put that down, you can weigh it down. Um, just something like a book will do um, and do that to each piece. This 2.5 kilo weight is a bit overkill. Now, the razor saw on the underfloor installation foam is amazing. Um, it is just such a nice, clean, easy way of cutting foam. Um, so, if you want to try it, get a try, I'm sure you'll be impressed. But, cut the shape out with a knife or snap it. Uh, but what I'm wanting is I want at least two of them that, once they're side by side, look like they're at least part of the same um, unit. I mean, I can't run my slayers as a hard, but... You know, it just looks a bit nicer when they're set out for looking at. For all, all your other ones, where if you want random ground forms, all we're doing is snapping the foam just so it's as random as it possibly can be. Any straight edges, I'll bang them in the corners. Um, if there isn't any straight edges, just move them into the middle, simple as. But if you want them at the edge, just break off a corner. Right, once you've worked on all your foam and got it all glued down, um, your rock moulds should be should be set, they will be rather soft at this point, so you might break them as you're getting out. But this is the perfect time to get them out, because at the end of the day, we're, we're working in such a small area that we're going to be breaking them up into small pieces anyway. 
It makes them a lot easier to work with because once it goes off, it's a pain in the ass to break and snap where you want them to snap. They normally snap on a on a finer area where you don't want them to break. So take them out after about 20 minutes, pull them out. If they break, don't worry about it because you can blend them all together with the compound later. Tidy up, one thing, one pro tip from me, all them off cuts of foam, don't bother keeping them because you end up with plastic bags full and, and just nowhere to put them. Um, because at the end of the day, when you start a project, you're cutting off pieces of foam to what you want anyway. So just throw them away. There's no point holding on to them. Now, I normally use hot glue for sticking on the uh, rock moulds, but after speaking to uh, Miss Castor Rain, um, and it has happened in the UK, Hot glue sometimes melts, especially if your mod models are in the car uh, over summer uh, and the heat gets up. You can sort of melt the glue again inside and they can fall off. So I'm using epoxy. This is a five minute epoxy. Again, very fast drying. Um, at the end of the day, hot glue takes around five minutes to go off properly anyway, so it's not much longer. Um, and when you're working with this, you can put them on and you're no going to know over the course of you know, summer or if you're leaving them in a car, you ain't got any worries of this glue ever re-warming up and falling off. Epoxy won't. It's a plastic at the end of the day. It's foam safe. Um, so yeah, it's the perfect glue for the job when you're working in a rush. But if you're not working in a rush, you could use something like a acrylic cork. Um, you could use some form of silicon sealant just for speed because it grabs quick um, or just some PVA if you've got a lifetime of spare, spare time. <laughs> but I like to just use uh, epoxy or hot glue. Now once you've stuck them in place, don't worry about breaking them, just push them round the rock. Um, so yeah, bang some glue on, push them round the rock. If they'll snap on that edge as you as you apply pressure on that small area and they'll break and follow the, the foam. For filling in that crack, we'll sort it out with the modeling compound later. Now. When working on the smaller bases, don't worry if your rocks are higher than your foam. We'll fix that later with the modeling compound. Can you see where this is going? Modeling compound is the magic. And for bases where I'm not bothering with any sort of ground form, I'm just putting rocks on. Um, I just literally stick them on with epoxy. I would normally use super glue, but because I had some left from mixing too much up, I just stuck them down with epoxy. Plus, epoxy is a far better bond than super glue over long periods of time. Super glue does deteriorate over the course of a few years. Now, once that glue's completely dry and you've stuck everything on, it's best time now to trim all your foam flat, okay? Again, just chuck the razor saw down the back and down the sides, and that way you get a nice, it's relatively right angle um, finish. To blend all the ground forms in, so you're not overusing your, uh, you're not overfilling with your uh, modelling compound and things. I just scorch it away. You could sand this if you want, but sanding's messy. Um, yes, do this outside. Don't do it inside like me. Um, but you can. It just makes it. It's a lot quicker. It's a lot easier, and you do get a lot more natural finish, which we will be covering with modelling compound later. If you melt the foam behind the rock, don't worry about it. We can fill that in with the magic material. Now, compound, guess what? Magic, <laughs> you can buy that from my shop below. Um, you could use fillers and plasters, but again, it's a longer working time, it's a lot heavier, uh, and because this is mixed with paper, it's a lot more harder wearing. Um, so you can just throw it on as thick as you want, you can mold it into shape. Um, so when you add the water, just make sure it's like a tuna mayonnaise sort of consistency. Um, get a rough sort of look to what you want, Leave that then to dry uh, for five, ten minutes and it'll sort of firm up. And then once it's firmed up, all you've got to do is come back in with some water and smooth out the areas to get the shape that you want. Okay, so I'll show you doing that in a second. Right, so smoothing it out. Once you've filled all the gaps in the rocks and all the everything else, this is around five, 10 minutes. Um, so just wet your fingers, get in there, 
and get a good smoosh around and it'll be all nice and flat and blended in and you won't see any start and stopping parts. One thing to add though, it is very fast drying as I keep saying, so work in small quantities and do around a base maybe two at a time max um, because by the time you've uh, done one or do, you're doing two, it will dry. Now all I've done for the areas where I want to put little streams of water, I've left them rather flat and built up around the areas in the middle and just to show there's like streams everywhere. I'm painting them brown, um, it's just some brown uh, house paint from Wilco's. Um, this is not going to, this is the ground cover as such but we do put a ground cover over the top of it. Um, but just do this, miss all the rocks and then we'll get on to painting the rocks in a bit. Right, now for painting the rocks what I like to do is get a selection of colours you don't need a lot so if you haven't got any craft paints of the colours you want using your model paints is fine just a drop of each for your bases that you're doing add a drop of paint or a couple and then just add like 80 90 percent water your black one add a little bit less because that's going to be an overall wash and then with the blue um, I just bath that over say 80 percent of all the rocks this is to just give it that sort of bluey slate undertone um, and then when we go to the stone grey we do an all over wash and this sort of tones the blue down a bit using the white of the original plaster for the highlights and then you do an overall black wash once it's all dry just to bring out the shading and uh, dark work and that way you get a really nice natural looking stone it's not took you any time to do it all because it's on plaster it dries very quickly around 10 minutes and it looks really natural if you want to preserve that and make it so it won't chip or anything just get a spray of watered down pva glue now we're using the base ready uh, arid earth mix uh, from my range just as the main ground covering um i'm not putting it everywhere i'm putting it mainly in the riverbed um because we're going to be flocking this so i just sprinkle it all over the place um just wet in the areas where i think it's going to be on show more um, again, that's one thing you can save on products because if you're covering it with something else, why bother doing it all over? Um, it's one thing I've learned from when I used to dry brush sand and stuff is you tend to just do a load of work and then cover it up anyway. Now for speed, because I'm working with static grass, it needs to be bone dry before we crack on to the next step. I am actually sealing this down with very thin super glue. This is available from my store. It's 50 grams for around two pounds. Um, and then to make that dry very quickly, we use the Mitafast um, accelerator. When spread from a distance, it doesn't go white, um, so it stays the original colour. Uh, and you can just spray it on top and it dries within around 10-15 seconds. Um, so yeah, super quick, already dry, ready for the next step. As you can see, looks pretty cool. Then, for applying the static grass, we're going to be using some of the Luke's APS uh, PVA glue, but any PVA glue will do. Um, just spread that on. B, think about where you're putting it. If you're wanting some of the rocks to show and everything else like that, don't be putting the glue on the rocks. We're starting with a spring uh, from my range, uh, two mil grass as the base layer. We knock that off, and then we use 50% uh, uh, wood varnish and 50% PVA glue. Um, I have got a video on cheap map mediums, which is more or less what this is, um, mixed in as a, a static grass glue. Let that absorb in, and then we'll go on to the 4mm spring grass, which we can put on straight over the top, and this gives some nice different colour and heights, even though it's the same grass. And once you've tapped that off, it should be looking a little bit like that. Now, if that's the colour that you're going for, you could leave it there. I'm wanting to go for that sort of tundra, sort of brown grass look. Um, so I'm going to add some more glue, uh, let that soak in, and then we're going to go on with the uh, four mil dead grass. Now, usually I'd use six mil grass, but because I'm building up the layers in such a small area and I'm using stunties, I didn't want to half swallow them in the grass. So that's why I've used uh, shorter lengths. For adding my flock, all I do is, again, put a couple of sprinkles of the uh, glue on and then sprinkle the flock into place and tap it down in between the grasses. Remember, if you are doing this, don't do one base at a time. Work with them all at the same time and that way you'll get this job done a lot quicker and it'll be a hell of a lot more uniform than doing one-offs. Now, for gauze bushes, I use a Pine Needles Fine Green, some sea foam and uh, Fix-It spray that we all sell in our store. 
we put Bill Cosby down to catch all the spray <laughs> and then we uh, we spray the bush and literally just dip it in the pine needles. Um, reason this is called pine needles, it's a very spiny foam flock um, which resembles pine needles. It's very good for bushes like gauze bushes, pine trees or anything that's got like a very small leafy look. As you can see it just resembles a very nice spiny bush. Now how we apply them is we use just some basic PVA um, on the back of the uh, tuft and then press it in. Repeat that all over and you're left with gauze bushes on your bases. Now if, if you was to go in for like a summer look um, you could add some yellow flock um, for like the yellow flowers and stuff that you see on them but I didn't go for that look. Now for attaching miniatures very thick gel super glue this is mitre fast that goes with the accelerator um, again very safe to use on your miniatures because it doesn't white when you spray it with the accelerator it's one reason why i use it and it's one reason why i sell it um, because activators sometimes can create white cloudiness this doesn't so that's why i use it it's a very cheap set for the glue and the spray all links are below so apply all your models round and then we're getting on to water effects. This is again another product that I sell. Um, I don't sell the isopropanol but you can find that on the Amazon links. Um, put the ink into the um, isopropanol. Put in your clear fix which is an MS polymer um, which then you can thin right down uh, to the sort of consistency of say honey treacle and just place it all around your models best thing about this it does self level sort of um, which is nice because it gives you a nice sort of pleasant river look um, but also you don't have to mess around taping the edges and messing around with resins and everything else when you're doing a shallow pour anyway if you were doing a deep pour I would advise resin then doing this on top for texture um, but again very quick setting it's already clear so anybody new to water effects <laughs> it's you can see what you're doing okay when working with acrylic mediums and everything, the white, you're putting in your wave textures and everything, and it can be a bit concer concerning because you don't know what you're actually doing or what you're going to be left with. This, you can see and once you're happy, you just leave it to dry and then after about half an hour you can be applying your waves, the splashing effects, your foot marks where it's like pushing away from the feet. It's just a superb water effect um, and it's cheap, it's easy to use. It's a perfect water effect for beginners and anybody above, really. So, guys, yep, easy as that. Um, just having a few, you know, static grasses, a few bits of flock. Um, the modeling compound saves the day, and I did all them bases in around two hours. Um, the the longest bit is waiting for the um, the water effects to set enough before you build it up with the uh, waves, which you'll see on the video on Friday. But overall, a couple of hours and I've done a whole army's worth of basing. Um, and that's the best thing about it. You don't have to wait for anything to completely dry because it all dries so quickly you can just move on. So that's again the APS system and that's what I've developed over the last few years so I don't have to slow down. So I can make being a commission painter and, and, a, and a scenery builder for a living because time's precious. And when you, have, when you eliminate all the drying times, it makes everything simple. All right, guys. So if you want to support the channel, do check all the links below to my shop. Uh, anything that we don't sell will be on the Amazon affiliate shop um, and links and everything. If you just want to buy a T-shirt, mugs, stickers, whatever you want, check the Teespring. It's always displayed below this video. And uh, yeah, if you don't want to do any of that, just keep watching my videos. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in. Um, and yeah, we'll see you again for the next video. Love, love, love.